Hello, how are you doing? I took a little break from recording, but now, can you see these two? These are attached now. I designed some brackets, fitted them to those headlamps, and now what's left to do is to install these two projector assemblies for the headlights and prepare some wiring harnesses for them to, to work with the car. Uh, since I already showed you how to trim these projectors, how to install them, this is going to be a sped up video of me fitting them inside here. Then I think I'll show you the design of those brackets that hold the ballasts and then we'll prepare some wiring looms. So how does this hold to the headlamp itself and how is the ballast mounted to this bracket? Uh, I designed this bracket in, in a couple of uh, prototypes. This thing here is, is this prototype. Uh, it's meant to be put together like this so that this seal goes into this recess here and then after you assemble it, then you use three screws here, here and there. And then using a rubber grommet like this one, you put this grommet over here under this lip, just like this. And using this lip design, I managed to support the weight of this whole assembly just using this rubber thing. And then, just to prevent this from rotating, there is this um, L-shape thing with a hole over here. Just to fit an existing screw that is present on this headlamp, and this way it, it won't move anyhow. This is a tight fit, so you know, you have to put some force into it to, to extract this whole thing from here. As you can see it here, I painted it with bumper paint to give it this flat black finish. So, you know, it blends in here pretty nicely. As you can see here, I already put everything together. This is the cord for, uh, for the xenon bulb. What's left to do is to prepare the harness for the power that will be taken from, from this lead for H7 bulbs. So now I can proceed to doing the wiring. The next thing is the type of wire. This is the so-called FLRY-B type of wire, where F stands for Fahrzeug in German, which is a car or a vehicle. L stands for Leitung, which is the wire. R stands for uh, reduced uh, insulation here, because at 12 or 24 volts, depending on, on if it's a car or a truck, you don't need 
that thick of insulation as you need for home wiring and so on. And then Y stands for the fact that the insulator is made out of PVC here. The dash B says that the wire is actually asymmetrical in its cross section. And then after the wires there are the connectors. So the connectors that fit here are uh, the Tyco multi-lock 4-pin connectors. I think they are 070 series. Okay, so let's make those wires 6 inches long. I think this should be enough. These wires are 0.75 square millimeters in their cross section. I went for yellow and brown because these are the colors that are present inside the headlamp. Yellow being the power and brown being the ground. Let's shortly discuss how the high beam solenoid operates here. Uh, so the easiest way to connect the high beam solenoid would be to take the, the two wires that are fed right here and just connect them to the power of the high beam bulb. Mm. However, imagine a situation in which you drive during the day and you don't use your uh, low beam headlamps. You just want to flash your high beams to you know, communicate with other drivers. So then, when you directly connect the solenoid to the power of the high beam bulb, then even though the xenon bulb is not turned on, you're actuating this solenoid for no good reason. And this is also not too good because, you know, it's an inductive load that is not really good for electronics that switch everything in a car. So, um, to prevent this situation, I did uh, a small adapter here that disconnects the ground that goes to the solenoid with an n-channel MOSFET whose gate is connected to the low beam power. This way when uh, when the low beams are off then the gate is pulled down to the ground that's why the uh, the ground going to the solenoid is disconnected. When your low beams are on, then the gate is driven high and this connects the, the ground to the solenoid and then both the bulb and the solenoid operate to have, you know, like a dual high beam function. Important thing, these headlamps do not have a type approval for this light source that I installed in it. We have to bear that in mind. But what I'm trying to prove in this whole project is that you can retrofit a light source into an existing headlamp that would satisfy all the type approval requirements for that kind of light source 
and with the kind of equipment that you have on your car or actually you don't have because I don't have automatic headlamp leveling, neither do I have headlamp cleaning system. So this is the whole point of this project.